Welcome to this mid-year reset video. This video is going to be split into two parts. The first part is going to be a deck declutter. The second part is going to be me sort of talking about my goals for the rest of 2023. So that'll be tarot and Hellenic paganism related. So we'll begin with my deck declutter. So this is the Fountain Tarot and I've owned this for probably a couple of years now. However, the reason I've decided to declutter it is because I only use this deck for like really neutral reading. So I use it when maybe like I'm feeling a bit bad or something, you know, not too great. And I usually just go for it when I want something very clean and clear and simple. However, I've been using my Rider Waite Smith for those kinds of readings instead lately. And actually, I think I prefer the way the Rider Waite Smith reads. This skews a lot more positive, I would say, and softer compared to the RWS, where I think it just reads a bit too softly for the kind of readings that I want to use it for. The Rider Waite Smith is kind of fulfilling that role really well, and there's no way I'll ever get rid of the Rider Waite Smith. It's one of my favourites, so... That's that one. It still is really, really beautiful. You can't really argue with the artistic skill, can you? <laughs> this is the Intuitive Night Goddess Tarot. I'm decluttering this because, honestly, I just haven't really used it. I bonded with it really well when I first got it, and I've probably had it around four or five months now. I just haven't reached for it. The way this reads is almost a little bit like the Darkwood Tarot. Like It's quite deep and quite intuitive and I feel like I much prefer the Darkwood Tarot and I would 100% always reach for the Darkwood Tarot over this. The Darkwood Tarot is much more my style of art. I love kind of comic booky art. It's one of my sort of things I'm into. But even though this is extremely beautiful and it's really well collaged, I just haven't I haven't really used it beyond when I first got it. It's a shame because this card as well I absolutely love. I still think some of the cards in here are absolutely beautiful. I love the death card in this deck as well. Actually, it's got quite nice card stock. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just down to like me not really using it and not really connecting to it in the same way as like another deck that's kind of similar. That's that one. The next deck I'm going to be decluttering is the Good Karma Tarot. This is actually really lovely. This is one of my favourite cards, and I also really like this card. The reason I'm getting rid of this is because it's gone off the style of art, generally. I really like push this deck through its paces. I tried it for lots of other types of readings because I really wanted to see what it was capable of. Oh, my lighting's going in and out again. I wanted to see what it was capable of. Could it handle dark readings? Could it handle shadow work? Could it handle really spiritual, deeper dive type spreads and things? And... No, is the answer. It could not. I just felt like readings I was getting were quite shallow. They just didn't dive very deeply. Maybe that's not a surprise to most people, but I just kind of wanted to see if it could cope with that. And it, I don't know, it couldn't really get it. Whatever I liked about this deck when I first got it, I just don't like it anymore. It's a shame, but that's what I'm like. I do kind of go off things quite easily. I think I overuse decks as well. <laughs> So if I overuse a deck, I'll use it like tons and then I'll be like, oh my god, I cannot even stand to look at you anymore. And it's like, goodbye. I think after like recent events for me, this just doesn't, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. I don't feel like it's versatile enough to keep around. It's a bit too light and a bit too positive. And I think some of the darker cards don't feel like they land in the same way. Maybe good for like a, a child or a teenager or something. and um, Or someone who's, you know, just wants something very positive that's not going to be scary. It's a happy yellow colour. You were too happy in the end, weren't you? The final deck I'm going to be decluttering is the Witchling Academy Tarot. Again with this one, I've had this one probably at least a year, maybe a bit longer. It's like got this really cool sort of anime style. I just haven't really reached for it and it reads like very well. It reads like very generally. It doesn't, I don't feel like it has like loads of personality or anything. You know, some decks have that really sort of funny, cheeky side or they're quite deep and dark or whatever. But I think I have like other decks that I prefer to use above this one. I think it just doesn't quite fit into the direction I feel like my tarot practice is going to go in. Or at least the way I need it to go for now. And again, I will talk about that in a minute. It's one I've been thinking about getting rid of for a while. I think I mentioned that in one of my other videos. Yeah, it's really lovely. If you love Harry Potter or you love anime, I think you'd really like this. I am quite ruthless about not keeping things if it doesn't work for me. I mean, I just don't see the point. I'm not sentimental. I'm one of those really annoying people that like doesn't keep presents. <laughs> yeah, don't buy me a gift. That's the last deck that I'm going to be decluttering. I've set some goals for my mid-year reset. So they're sort of more, not really goals, they're more like intentions, I guess, because I don't like to be too strict with myself about things like that, because I'm quite fluid and changeable. And, you know, I like to just go where my curiosity takes me, man. 
One of the things that I've been wanting to do for like quite a few years is try the Tarot de Marseille. So my first intention for this mid-year reset is to explore the Tarot de Marseille. It's a reproduction. It's got really nice cardstock. I actually quite like the colours in this and I think like they've redone the faces so they look a little bit less stern. I just think their faces are so funny. They kind of look a little bit like they've had a bit of a hard night out. <laughs> <laughs> like they're a bit hungover. <laughs> this deck is quite new to me. I haven't really, I've read with Pips a little bit over the years, but nothing to this degree. And yeah, I just felt it like it was time. I bought this book, which goes with the deck and the deck together. It's kind of a pared back, kind of more minimal system. I actually really like that it's based more on like colour, directionality, numbers, etc, etc. More of a elements, numerology type person. I think, you know, potentially I could get along with this. I mean, there's no shame if I don't like it. I'm not really bothered if I don't like it, honestly. I just wanted to experience it. Um, I've been talking myself out of a soft deck for about 10 years, so <laughs> I feel like the Tarot de Marseille was maybe a little bit of a safer bet. This will probably be something that I do on and off for the rest of the year, hopefully. I mean, if I get to a month in with this and I'm like, I cannot bloody stand this deck, <laughs> you know, it's perfectly fine for me just to be like, okay, we'll call it quits, it's fine. I'm enjoying it, I will carry on attempting to learn it. But again, it might be, not be a system that I personally find gratifying. I might um, just get what I can from the experience and then move the deck and the book on, but we'll see. So that's that one. That's one of my intentions for the rest of 2023. Now, I did allude to the fact earlier when I was talking about the decks that I wouldn't be keeping that my tarot deck collection is kind of moving in a different direction. My second kind of reset goal for the rest of 2023 is going to be exploring more earthy decks. Now, the reason I want to do this is because 2023, honestly, has been quite a difficult year for me. And I'm not going to get into, like, that stuff. After what has been not a great year so far, I kind of just had my birthday at the beginning of June. I'm starting to feel better. And while stuff is not over, I'm in a better place and I kind of feel like it's just time for a reset. I'm very strongly drawn to that sense of grounding and earthiness. That is the kind of energy I need going forward. And actually, I feel like there's a lot of shifts within my own sort of spiritual practice, which I'll talk about a little bit in a minute. But, you know, I do see myself more as like an animist. Don't always like to, I don't know, I, don't, I hate labelling myself, quite honestly, because I feel like I change quite a lot, you know, day to day. <laughs> I think I kind of come back to kind of an animistic mindset. And I think it's become very clear to me that like that kind of viewpoint of the world is quite important to me. I kind of want that reflected a bit more in my decks. Actually, this one is the Herb Crafters Tarot. This was actually a gift for my birthday. My mum and dad bought it for me as part of my birthday present. But these are just like little windows into nature and they feel very meditative. I probably won't use this as a proper tarot deck. I've kind of been using it as almost like asking what remedy do I need? I don't like asking what medicine do I need because that kind of sounds a bit I don't know, I don't, I don't really like that. You just feel like meditative windows into nature where I can kind of just practice some mindfulness and like connect with nature even if I can't access it all the time. But I do have a garden, you know, I can go out for a walk, but you know, if it's chucking it down with rain as it often is, I can use this and it's just a good way to path work, I guess. You really don't like the term tarot collection when I'm talking about myself because I don't collect tarot decks and there's obviously there's nothing wrong with collecting. If you want to collect, that's wonderful. For me, I'm kind of more of a, I don't know, I see my sort of collection as like a ecosystem. I think collection implies static nature, whereas I think for me it's much more about movement and fluidity and things sort of coming and going and changing, <laughs> even though it sounds really poncy, so sorry. Some part of me inwardly cringes and um, I think of my decks as like a collection because I just, it's really not accurate. <laughs> I can just feel that that sort of grounding connection to the earth is what is important for me. And it's something I really want to highlight and have reflected more in the decks that I use. Because I think there is this, there is something nice about decks that you own reflecting your worldview. And obviously our worldviews shift and change. You know, mine certainly does. It has a lot over the years. But nature has always been at the centre of my sort of spirituality. These types of decks, these more earthy decks, just feel like they're the kind of ones I want to bring in more into my sphere and they're the kind of ones that I want to work with and use and you know use in different ways as well so yeah that's kind of it I don't think there's anything else I want to say about that but that's that's the reason I've gotten rid of those other decks and 
there might be one or two others. And it's not just because I'm doing this on a whim. I've gone through a bit of a rough time lately, and like, or um, well, this year. And, you know, I'm alright. I'm fine. But I do feel like something has shifted within me over the past sort of six months, and I've just been thinking about this quite a lot lately. And it, yeah, I think after my birthday, it just felt like I was ready to like really think about this sort of stuff a bit more deeply and reflect and be like, okay, so <laughs> beginning of the year did not turn out how I expected. How can I move forward in a way that feels more in alignment with who I am now and what I've experienced this year? So, um, so yeah, that's kind of my reasoning. Basically, I just want to ground, heal, and I feel like that kind of earthy energy from my decks can like help me with that. And obviously there will be some things which I'll mention in a second about my spiritual practice as well. So that's that one. Thank you, mummy and daddy. The intention I have for my mid-year reset is to work more with my ancestors. I used to be very ancestor focused a few years ago, but I, can't, I don't know. <laughs> some changes happened to my spiritual practice and that kind of fell by the wayside. Um, I don't feel like they get the due that I would like to give them. I mean, they're probably never going to be as central as they were like, a few years ago, but I think I still would like to do a bit more with them. And actually, this is a new deck for me. This is called the Compendium of Witches. And it's the same illustrator or artist that did the Terror of the Witches Garden. I actually bought this at first to use with that deck, but when I read with them together, I learned very quickly that they are very different energies. <laughs> And actually, the more I looked at this, the more I used it on its own. I saw that actually this might be a really good, like, ancestral veneration deck. <laughs> so I think I would like to use this sort of with the intention of contacting ancestors. Probably not, like, immediate ancestors, but like those almost, like, archetypal ancient ancestors. Half the deck is these sort of fictional witches. I think this, this person here is the only non-fictional witch. Well, she's not a witch, I think. She's, like, was accused of witchcraft. But these are all, like, fictional. And then the other half of the deck is the more minimalist um, images. And these are called voice cards, and these are called whisper cards. The readings I've done with this have been quite powerful. I was at home on my own quite late at night doing a reading for myself. And I pulled this card, it literally made me jump. Because <laughs> I'm a scaredy cat, and apparently oracle cards scare me now. So that's, that's good. That's why I never watch horror films. Honestly, I haven't watched a horror film since I was like, I don't know, 18? And I'm 36 now. <laughs> face is stunning. I love her too. The intention is to use this as part of ancestral veneration in a way of contacting them through the cards. You know, those kind of like deep earth ancestors, if that makes sense. Not, I'm not talking about my grandma. Very intuitive as well. But again, this kind of reflects that slightly more earthy, animistic quality that I kind of want to bring into my tarot ecosystem. <laughs> this is a really nice cardstock, it's quite plasticky, so some of you might not like that, but if you quite like that kind of thing, this has a nice slip to it. This was originally a independently published deck, I believe, but this one, this copy that I've got was published by Low Scarabea, so it's quite easy to get a hold of. So yeah, that's that one. I'm just putting this here so you've got something to look at while I talk about this last goal or intention. This is the Mythic Oracle and this is kind of like Greek mythology focused. So this last goal is kind of to do with my Hellenic pagan part. Part of the idea of becoming more earthy and kind of like filing that healing and that grounding through nature and my kind of more animistic practices. I'd actually really like to ground my Hellenic path um, more in my local environment. So I'm not sure what that's going to look like fully, but I know that I'm probably going to incorporate more British festivals into my calendar and, you know, move around the Greek ones that I may choose to celebrate or not or, you know, what have you. One of the other things I want to do is incorporate some non-Hellenic deities into my practice. Now, whether I choose to venerate them in a Hellenic manner or whether I choose to <laughs> venerate them in the manner that they're more accustomed to is a different matter. You know, there are certain beings or deities that I'm like super interested in that I've worked with in the past or venerated in the past. I kind of would like to bring them in. It's probably more authentic and more realistic to, to bring in some of those influences from my own heritage and also from where I live. I mean, I'm half Persian as well as being English. So there is a Persian goddess called Anahita. She was Possibly worshipped in ancient Greece under a slightly different name. 
but she's a goddess I've always wanted to get to know a little bit better, or at least just make an offering or two to her on occasion. It's kind of associated more with like Ishtar and Aphrodite, those kind of goddesses. But she's definitely her own Persian thing. And, you know, being half Persian, I would like to have more of a nod towards that side of my ancestry. I've, I've been there a couple of times and I celebrate Nauru's every year on the spring equinox. I eat a lot of Persian food. I think I'm made of rice. I think if you cut me open, I'd just be made of rice. But <laughs> anyway, and also like on the British side, I'm very fond of the goddess Rhiannon, more of a Welsh deity or figure in mythology. But yeah, she's one I've like on and off over the years I've always honoured. Bringing in more of yourself into your spiritual practice, that's kind of what I want to do. Again, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but I will be doing a video about my Hellenic pagan practice, but it probably won't be till like later in the year. I have another altar that I will show I do that video. But uh, for now, I'm just, I've am just i just got other stuff to do. <laughs> but yeah, that will come eventually. And also while I'm tweaking things, I kind of don't want to make a video when I'm fiddling about. <laughs> fiddling about with my practice. So those were my reset intentions for the rest of 2023. I hope your June has been good so far. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!